Welcome back to the second video which looks at IGCSE computer science um, for the Cambridge exam board. We're going to look at chapter one or topic one which is data representation but in this video we're going to be looking at um, the hexadecimal number system looking at converting between denary and binary but also looking at what is the point and why we use hexadecimal. For this course we will need to understand four different users for hexadecimal including error codes, MAC addresses, IP addresses and um, the HTML color system how hexadecimal is used to color um, web pages. Now as you know from the previous chapter a computer can only work with binary digits. The digits represent the um, transistors on the CPU and whether they're in an on or an off state. Um, Computer scientists can work with binary, but they find hexadecimal a more convenient thing to use. This is because one X digit represents four binary digits. So something really long, like the number below, um, this number here, can be represented, um, the 16 bits can be represented as four different digits, in this case D to AF. It's easier for a person to remember. Before we begin, let's have a little look at what exactly is the hexadecimal number system. It is a number system based on 16 different digits. The same digits as that are in base 10, 0 to 9, but because of 16 different digits or characters, we also include A for representing 10, B11, C12, D13, E14, and F15. In base 16, we're going to start with the units column, and then when we get to 16, times it by 16, times it by 16. So we have 1, 16, times 16 is 256, times 16 is 4096, and so on and so forth. Now since 16 is 2 to the 4, this means that the f there are 4 binary digits, or a nibble as we've covered before, that are equivalent to only one hexadecimal digit. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we look here, we've, we have um, a two-digit accessible number, 5F. Now, we can break those two numbers down into, into two nibbles. For example, as you can see there, we've got the nibble on, on the left, representing the 5, has a value of 4 and 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. And on the other side, on the right-hand column, we've got F, which is represented by 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 15. So 5F equals... 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 in binary. To take that a step further, if we forget about the two nibbles for the time being and go back to the old system that we know, 1, 2, 4, 8, and then doubling every time up to 1, 2, 8, or a byte of information, we can see that we've got one lot of 64, a 16, an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 1, and we add all those numbers together and we have a base 10 number, a decimal number of 95. We can take this a stage further. Um, we'll look at a, a bigger number now, 1A5F. So that would be, um, F would be the unit, so 15 lots of ones. Five would be the 16 column, so 16 lots, sorry, five lots of 16. A would be the 256 column, so 10 lots of 256, and what would be the 4096 column, so one lot of 4096. So let's break that number down into four parts, a nibble for each of the numbers in, in, the, um, in, the, in those four digits. We've got a 1 in the, in the first nibble, we've got 10, or A, for the second nibble, 5, 4 plus 1 for the third nibble, and then 1, 1, 1, 1, or 15, which would be F for the um, for the last digit. Remove the lines, remove the nibbles. We can see there we have a, a number adding all the 4096 plus 2048. Add them all together where the ones are. We have a number, a decimal number of 6,751. We can go the other way. If we start with a base 10 number, I'm going to convert this into binary. So as you can see there, 1 lot of 1 to 8, a 64, a 16, a 4, a 2, and a 1 would all add up to 215, 215. 
I put the line back in to split it into two nibbles. So the left hand column we have 8 plus 4 plus 1 which would equal 13 which we know is, is D in hexadecimal and we, then we have a 4, a 2 and a 1 on the other side which equals 7. So 215 in base 10 converted into hexadecimal would be D7. What do we use hexadecimal for? Well let's start with MAC addresses. Now a MAC address or a media access control address is a unique number that identifies a particular device um, that is connected to the internet or the network. Any device, it could be um, Apple TV, it could be your, your MacBook, a computer, um, anything at all that's connected to the internet. We've got here um, a picture of an, a Huawei, um, a router in your house that's connected, that you connect to in order to get onto the internet. Um, the MAC address doesn't change when you connect to the internet. It is unique to that particular device. So in your computer you have a network card, a NIC card, and on that card or part of that card is its unique identity. Um, as an example of it here. There's often some confusion between um, MAC addresses and IP addresses. Um, an IP address is the location of your device where it is on the internet whereas the MAC address is actually what the product, what the thing is that is connecting to the internet. You can see some examples of 48-bit MAC addresses here and you can see it's broken down into two parts. The first part, the um, NNNNNN, it refers to the manufacturer, be that Apple, be it Cisco, Dell or whoever, and the second six characters refer to the um, the actual serial number, the unique serial number of the product. And there's an example at the bottom. Next is the IP address, the Internet Protocol Address. Um, this is a unique identification number that every device has that is connected to the Internet. So this is where the confusion might lie in terms of this and the, and the MAC address. It, is, it represents the unique location on which you are connected to the internet, allowing devices all over the world to communicate with each other. It works a little bit like um, a postal address. If the post office has some letters to deliver to you, they need to know where you live. And this is exactly the same for the internet. You, The internet needs to know where you are in order for you to receive emails and for um, devices to communicate with each other. Um, when you connect to the internet, you are assigned an IP address to use for your particular session. Um, this is issued by your network um, or your, your ISP, something like Vodafone or, or Iliad or whoever you use for your internet service provider. Um, to give you a real world example, um, if you were to take your laptop to McDonald's and connect to the internet, then your device would be given an IP address. If you decided that after you'd had your McDonald's and you wanted to have a coffee but you didn't like the coffee at McDonald's, so you wanted to go to Starbucks, so if you got up and walked to Starbucks um, and then connected to the internet there, then you would be assigned, or your device would be assigned, a different IP address. If we move on to error codes, error codes are... Is, is, a very short, a very short part of this. Error codes are often shown as hexadecimal values. Um, Windows uses them a lot, and you may be familiar with 404 page not found and various things. But they're also used for things like printers, uh, even washing machines, devices that have a micro microcontroller um, that may have, may have a little a little screen, and if something goes wrong, then an error message might pop up. It's great for people as service engineers, if they need to fix a problem, they can see the little error message and they can they know what, what the problem is. For example, with a printer, if you get a certain message, um, it might just mean that there's a paper jam or it might mean that the printer um, is out of toner or something like that. Finally, we need to look at um, how color is represented using hexadecimal for websites, for web pages. So HTML, hypertext markup language, is used when writing and developing web pages. 
Um, it's a markup language rather than a programming language and it's used for pres the presentation of, um, of these web pages. You may have also come across style sheets CSS. HTML uses tags and there's an example at the bottom here of a header tag where the color red has been chosen for that particular heading. We know it's red because it's FF0000 but what does that mean? Well an accessible number is, is um, is six digits and the first two digits represent red the second two represent green and the third two represent blue so an example here to make orange we've used FF so basically full red um, and then we've used 99 for the green so a shade of green and 66 for a shade of blue and here are some more examples if we're combining um, full red and, uh, and full um, blue we, we end up with fuchsia and then FF and 8 and this time is, is a different type of orange you can see there um, and no lots of blue for that. HTML colors, hexadecimal colors rather, always start with a hashtag to show that it is actually a color that we're representing and because it's 16 times 16 for the red value because there's two values we end up with 256 five, it's the same for the blue and it's the same for the green so if we multiply all those together, 256, 256, 256, we end up with over 16 million, close to 17 million possible colors we can use on our websites. Um, that is it for HTML. I hope you've gained something from that and I hope it's helped you with your studying of this particular um, computer science course. Uh, please subscribe because there will be more videos along the way for each of the chapters that are in the book and, and as part of the syllabus. But until next time, thank you very, very much indeed. Bye for now.